Thanks, Brian. It's always a pleasure to be introduced by a person high on my list of eminent persons. So, uh, I just wanted to also welcome all of you here. Um, and I'd also really like to thank Pfizer again. I see you over there, Francis. I know you have some colleagues here. We really appreciate uh, the fact that you hosted us here in this wonderful place. Appreciate it. Um, I'd just like to say a, a brief word about the U.S. Council for International Business for those of you who may not be as familiar with who we are. We are an association that represents um, uh, <coughs> mainly large uh, U.S.-based global companies. Our main focus is on promoting the views of our members in international policy discussions, um, and especially major intergovernmental bodies like the UN and the OECD. Uh, we do that because we are the American affiliate of a number of um, uh, global business organizations, International Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Business Industry Advisory <coughs> Committee to the OECD, and the International Organization of Employers. Um, so, as I was saying this morning, one of the things that, that we want to make sure we do as an organization is represent well the interests of our U.S. Uh, constituency, but we're also wanting to make sure that as, as world citizens, and sort of based up here in New York, um, that we do our best to develop the, to, to facilitate the development of, of global business positions on the key issues of the day uh, that are credible and, and representative and, and thus um, uh, uh, hopefully welcomed by the intergovernmental uh, community that is uh, following these issues. We recognize that international negotiations have become increasingly important as society grapples with a number of issues, issues that will be part of the um, new um, comprehensive UN post-2015 development agenda uh, and others and, and all of them in the context of an increasingly globalized uh, economy. We, we had our um, annual dinner uh, last week and uh, we were very delighted and honored to host uh, Deputy Secretary General uh, Yanni Eliasson uh, there. And in his remarks, he made a critical observation. He said, and I quote, you in the business community are very much aware that wherever in the world you are operating, strong markets and strong societies go hand in hand. Not only war has a negative impact on economic growth and opportunities, the same goes for disease, degraded environments, social strife, and poor access to food, water, and energy. It is time to fulfill the potential of 1945 and rediscover our sense of shared purpose. It, it's time for business and the United Nations to reconnect in building a world where international peace and prosperity reinforce each other. Well, we, we couldn't agree with that more, and we view events like this today as an opportunity to advance a common agenda of prosperity and betterment of, of the human condition. So moving over to the Green Economies Dialogue, a little over two years ago, um, uh, USCIB helped establish this initiative. Um, it created a platform for, for business to engage with a number of national governments, thought leaders, representatives of international institutions, and academics during discussions in the lead up to the Rio Plus 20 Earth Summit, uh, especially those dealing with the green economy and green growth. And the gentleman that just introduced me was a major force behind this, so we can all give him a sense of our appreciation for this. Um, this afternoon, we're pleased to launch the second phase of the Green Economies Dialogue. Our focus this time will be on the interaction with governments around the post-2015 development agenda, especially economic development and formulation in pursuit of the sustainable development goals. We are convinced that business has much to offer in this process. Um, as Deputy Secretary General Eliasson alluded to in the remarks I just quoted, it is in our, the business community's, interest for the UN development agenda to succeed. There's a strong business case for the development of SG, SDGs that will catalyze economic development, social progress, and environmental protection. And, and many of the SDGs will only be met with the development and global deployment of innovative new products, processes, services, technologies, business models, and new financial approaches that allow all of us to successfully overcome significant economic, social, and environmental challenges that we face. So for this to happen, we must all cooperate to uh, create appropriate enabling frameworks 
at national and international levels, and the essential purpose of the Green Economies Dialogue has been to create that space for respectful and responsible discussion of the challenges we face so that we can work more effectively together. We're hoping that we can provide a resource to all of you uh, as we look forward to subsequent meetings to discuss the uh, SDGs resuming later this fall.